is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call. For October 26, Monday, 2020, 3 p.m. Eastern, a lot of us have a tendency to sit on the sidelines with our lives, and we, we're, you know, uh, and I'm not going to upset the apple cart and move out of my comfort zone. I really like to do this, but I'm not going to do it because I don't know the outcome. And so as you can picture through your heart, minds, and the motion picture where people are, and remember, we're all teaching each other. We're literally all, whether you realize it or not, we're all interacting and teaching each other constantly. And so if you're watching, in, we're, we're kind of, we're, we're, we watch a lot as a civilization. We're curious. It's one of our innateness, if you will, of curiosity. So you, those who take a leap of faith and pursue their true passions, like what is it, have you ever asked yourself, what is it that inspires you more than anything else? And if you're able to identify that, are you doing that every week? If not, why don't you make it your number one priority? Because you deserve to enjoy this amazing life you're living every inch of the way. And it's you know, a lot of us don't realize that we are the masters. We are the master creators and designers of it all. Now, imagine, look at the people in your life who have inspired you before. Did anything ever stop them? They just went for it. That's it. And it's safe to take that leap onto your life anytime, right now. And when you do it, it does feel good. And it's always someone's turn to follow their bliss. And I say this to people all the time, go for it. What do you, what, you know, what is there, what is it holding you back? Well, I've got this, I've got that, I've got this, I have that, you know, and I can't do this because of that. And they talk themselves out of it. And then they wonder, what if they would have gone for it? What would have happened? What if they went for it? And this, this is connected to the attachments that we have on the materialistic world. This is what, and I, none of us are exempt from any of this. It's not like, oh, well, you know, I'm exempt from, no, you're not. <clears throat> There's, in other words, you've already arrived. There's no way to freedom. A way means you have to start from somewhere and arrive somewhere. And this is the deception of the mind. You don't have to go anywhere to find freedom. Forget about finding your way. You are already that which you are seeking, Papaji. And we, most of us, and this is the shift, guys. This is where we are turning into the realization and understanding of ourselves, of who and what we really are. Most people have spent lifetimes seeking and yearning and hoping, haven't you ever been in this? Hoping for that special something to be created into reality before you can truly relax and be happy. Haven't you ever been in that position? I think some of us are in that position right now. Waiting, hoping for that special something to manifest before we can truly relax and be happy. And so many of us feel that some unique experience has to happen first in order to find real inner peace and feel deeply loved. You know, be emotionally whole in order to find real inner peace and healed and spiritually free and financially abundant or exquisitely happy on the inside. And it's an unconscious belief that's causing all of us all of mankind to suffer.
suffer each day. We have all completely forgotten how to rest. People say, well, I take vacations, I rest. How many of us have, you know, I, I, I don't know what a vacation is, I haven't had a vacation in 30 years, but when, when you, you take a vacation, right? And then you're tired from your vacation. Um, and you, you, we just don't, a lot of us don't know how to rest. How to look deep inside and feel into the roots of our deeper spirituality and consciousness that is beneath the mind. Why does the mind exist? Why, does it, why do our minds exist? You ever ask yourself that? Maybe not. But why do they exist then? If they're an illusion, then why the heck do we have them? What are they for? The mind exists because of one thing, desire. We have a long list of desires inside. And without these desires, there is no mind. It's real important to understand this. The mind exists because of one thing, desire. We have a long list of desires inside. Without these desires, there's no mind. Try it out. See for yourselves. You'll see how even your own mind has become obsessed and addicted to searching and seeking for your own personal thing that will make your life even more perfect than it is. If you want the if you want the definition of the ultimate seducer, it is the mind. And it will make you think that when you put in a lot of hard work and effort, then one day you will be done and arrive at the grand destination. That's the mind. Perhaps your mind believes happiness will come in the form of financial freedom. How many have that? The ultimate lover, a perfect relationship, that winning the lottery, ticket, you know, that winning lottery ticket, your dream vacation, a better home, whatever it may be, your ideal body or spiritual enlightenment. The mind is the grand desire. It thinks that once you achieve that desire and arrive, then its job is finished. The reality is, it is happy for a few moments, we've all experienced this, and then mysteriously, it starts wanting something else. The mind is so used to wanting and feeding from the fire of desire that it doesn't know any other route to find happiness. The truth is, there's no end to this spiritual journey. There isn't, you know. And as long as the mind is in charge, we will never find inner peace. Now, how do you know this? Look at all your brothers and sisters. Don't judge them. But look at that. Look at everyone. And, and you'll know immediately whose mind is their mind in charge. Happiness is freedom from the desiring mind. The mind is a skilled, slippery con artist who is constantly keeping us away from happiness. It, it is working all the time like a desiring machine, which only knows three things. Wanting, wanting, and more wanting. Wanting, wanting, and more wanting. It only knows three things. The mind turned inwards is the self turned outwards. It becomes the ego and all the world, Ramana Marishi. The mind turned inwards is the self turned outwards. It becomes the ego and all the world. Isn't it super ironic that the mind 
mind, your mind, my mind, all of our minds, is constantly searching for something that'll cause it to stop searching. Now, you guys know this when you feel this in your heart minds. You know it. Deep down, it truly wants to be satisfied, yet it doesn't realize how simple it is. It would be deeply embarrassed to find out that all its years of constant wishing, hoping, and trying to satisfy itself is what's responsible for every experience of being unfulfilled. And the mind is totally unaware that when all wanting stops, when all wanting, desiring stops, deep fulfillment instantly comes in, instantaneously comes in. If we find ourselves constantly entangled in a web of never-ending desires throughout the day, we've simply become a desire addict. There's just been a little habit installed in your software that causes you to love wanting things all day long. To love wanting things all day long. And this is just a temporary phase on the path to enlightenment. Now, it's up to each of us, each and every one of us, that we can choose to unplug from this mindset without therapy or drugs. It is possible. It takes, it just takes a bigger burning desire than what's on your list of desires. A super burning, hot, flaming desire to be free from all your desires. Can you imagine that? A super burning, hot, flaming desire to be free from all your desires. You have to deeply want to find that which satisfies your soul and liberates you from the desire trap forever. Guys, this is part of the ascension. Okay? Let yourself burn up in this one desire. And you'll soon be finding a feeling of real peace that soothes your soul all life long. Now, understand something. Clearly so. The energy of desire is not a bad thing. It just creates a false sensation that you're lacking something. The truth is, you are not lacking anything. Anything, anything, anything. You have everything you need, each and every one of us do within us. Now, uh, yeah, you may want to pay your bills, clothe your body, feed your family, yet these are healthy incentives which gets you out of the house to greet the world each morning with your gifts and talents. If, the, if you want to call it a problem, the problem here is not desire, it, yet it's your attachment to it. When desire becomes the main juicy carrot that drives your entire purpose for being here on earth, then the experience of suffering takes over your life. When desire is blinding you from relaxing into yourself, realizing your real spiritual essence, helping you to know how deeply connected you are to the divine, then it's enslaving each and every one of us instead of serving us. When you make your list of outer desires more important than diving deep into your soul, it is distracting you and causing you to suffer. This life that we're all in partly is about learning the art of letting go. How to trust in the releasing process, feel your soul will carry you on and on forever. You must get to know exactly who you are if you're ever to conquer desire and be free. In a, a cinema show, you can see pictures only in very dim light or darkness. When all the light
lights are switched on, the pictures all disappear. Probably notice that when you've been in a theater. I've noticed that when I stand up and I see the the lights come on, the show's over, and the, and that and the picture kind of it does disappear, so to speak. So also it is when in the floodlight of the Supreme Self, all objects and desires disappear. So when you're in a movie picture, a cinema show, you can see the pictures only very dim light or darkness. When all the lights are switched on, the pictures all disappear. So also it is when in the flood, the, the flood light of the Supreme Self, all objects and desires disappear. Ramana Marishi. It's an invitation that comes to you whenever you choose to embrace it. For all of us in this lifetime, it is to discover that special something that completely liberates us no matter what is going on in our minds. It is something that you can realize that this special something is always within you and that it can instantly transport you beyond all the pain and agony and suffering that is being created by your mind. It's that one special thing that you can always rely on, no matter what, that will always bring you freedom, a feeling of bliss and deep satisfaction inside. If you are ready to know the great secret to always remaining satisfied with your life, take one, one large step back from your list of desires and take one small step into your heart right now. So visualize that in your heart minds. You're taking one large step back from all your desires, your huge list of desires, and you're taking one small step into your heart right now. So people say to me, how, how, to step in, how do you step into your heart? How do you do that? Imagine that it's happening. However you, d you visualize it is the right way. There's no, it's not like, oh, you're doing it wrong. Oh, no, it's not the right way. It, it's, imagine that it's happening however you visualize it. It, it's, it. it is the right way that will work for you. You can simply place all your focus and attention on your physical beating heart right now, feeling a deep gratitude for its service to your life and practice growing stronger in this thankful feel, uh, feeling all day long. Now, you can also breathe into your heart, imagining it is opening up like a flower, spreading its petals to the warm, shining sun. The key to this heart-centering exercise is simply awareness. Be aware of when you're lost in the mind and its list desires. It's being aware, guys. Being aware. Whenever you catch yourselves getting sucked into the head, gently, without guilt, bring your energy back into the heart. The wonderful thing about this is that when you're aware of it, you're already there. One very important secret on this path to enlightenment is not to try stopping the desires from forming in your mind, as this would be counterproductive to your life. Your desires are already there and have been naturally changing and growing with you since you were a baby. They have a life of their own, and until they are satisfied or liberated, they will remain there pulling at you. So I simply invite you to take a step back from your mind and notice your relationship with your desires. Watch it very closely, intimately, and notice that honestly, what honestly is your mind really, truly desiring? Ask yourself, what do you want more than anything?
anything in this life? What do you want more than anything in this life? Ask yourself three times, what do you want more than anything in this life? If you were given one magic wish that would be guaranteed to come true tonight, tonight, what would it be? The answer you find will reveal what is the real purpose of your life and a root reason why you are here. What is the greatest experience you are after in your life? Is it possible that any and each and every one of us can create a feeling that we're arriving there right now? It's being open. It might be something you can give yourself instantly instead of running for years after that carrot on the stick. And be aware who is in charge of the relationship you have with your mind. Notice what answers you come up with and don't from any judgment whatsoever. This is an invitation for each of you to find freedom from the designing mind, desiring mind, is very life challenging and, and radical task for anyone. It is perhaps the most radical and challenging experiment you'll ever take on in your entire life. Yet, try it out just for the next 24 hours. See if you can step back one inch from this desiring mind. Call off your horizontal search for happiness and start resting and relaxing into this peaceful, fulfilled, desireless, vertical reality. This means fully being present to the moment, watching each of your desires rise and fall away. Just for one day, one day, stop the addiction to desire, to the things of this physical world, and rest in your vast spiritual essence. Be free from the mind and be present to that energy consciousness and soul of which you truly are. Outwardness of the mind is suffering. Inwardness is happiness. Outwardness of the mind is suffering. Inwardness is happiness. Outwardness of the mind is suffering. Inwardness is happiness. Ramana Marishi. It's so ironic and healing at the same time. Yet when we release our attachment to fulfilling our desires, somehow, in some way, our desires magically manifest for us. When we relax our tight clenched fist on what we really want, we become a receptive open hand for our desires to fall into. Whatever you want in life wants you. The moment you relax into your true spiritual nature, and step away from the spinning wheels in your head, you instantly start being the super powerful, creating into reality, manifesting magnet you truly are. None of us can escape from the gravity of the universal laws. Why would we? And the number one law here is that whatever you place your attention on is what you bring and create into reality. We're all supreme reality. By allowing our minds to remain addicted and attached to longing for desires, we're simply thinking about what we don't have and manifest more lack and not having. You ever done that? 
None of us are exempt from it. When we relax and focus on our spiritual nature, that which permanently satisfies our souls, we become a magnet, and then we start manifesting what we really want instantly. By simply resting in the simple, soft, sweet essence of our being, we open 10,000 doors that will all take us home. Most of us, not all of us, we're most likely taught to believe in the myth that in order to be someone amazing, you have to do something equally amazing. The truth is, is that you don't have to do anything to tap into feeling your divine nature and infinite spiritual essence by intimately knowing this is your natural state every day. The old incessant desiring habit will drop on its own accord. Just choose to stop over-identifying with the desires in your mind. Redirect your attention to the heart, into that which is desireless. And you'll naturally discover the divine, all-powerful, manifesting intelligence already exists within you as you. Within you as you. And when each of us finally relax every part of our being, we naturally discover the enlightened being who we truly are. We realize that we are already tapped into an infinite creative source of love, joy, and energy. And we are already that special something which we've been longing to become our entire lives. We can call off the search right now. When you, when you, each of us, choose that you are the perfect shining light, which not only makes the existence of God's kingdom possible, but also it to be seen as some wonderful heaven. It allows it to be seen as some wonderful heaven. You, the kingdom of God, allows God's kingdom to be possible. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are. First thing that we desire, desire, want to do, care to do, is relax our bodies. Head to toe, inside and out. You're the master of it all. You master the body. The body relaxes, head to toe, inside and out. You're aware that the body is a sponge. It's a sponge for your mind. They understand that. So whatever you think, you create, you move, stress, anxiety, fear, remorse, guilt, anger, all of it. Let it go. You're the one that created it. You're the only one that can let it go. So it falls off. It just disappears, dissipates. You step out of the mind and into the heart. The body responds. There's something, something for us to really contemplate. Have you ever had a dream that you were so sure was real? What if you were unable to wake from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? That came out of the Matrix movie, Morpheus said that. How do you know there's more than, that there isn't just two sides to the coin? How do you know there may be not be four sides to the coin? Relax the body. Step out of the mind and into the heart. The body will respond and relax. And then we move into the 
now? What exactly is the now? Aren't I in the now now? You focus on the space between heartbeats. When you're in the now, you still the mind. When you're in the now, you step out of the mind and into the heart. The mind becomes your servant and not your master, as well as the ego. In the now, we are not running into the past. We are not running into the future. We are completely unmitigatingly in the now. We stay in the now. And the now is where quiet, peace is. It's where you connect with your God, soul, higher self. Only in the now. Some of us will go into the past. The past we've already experienced. Why would we go back there? We've got so much more in the now. Some of us go back there when we create a future out of it and we relive it in that future. Others spend most of their time wandering into a future that doesn't exist. All along, leaving the now alone by itself. So you're in the now. You stay in the now. How do you stay in the now? One of the ways is to focus on your breath, your breathing. The breath is only in the now. It can't be past breath or future breath. It is only in the now. When you focus on your breath, you know you're in the now. You step out of the mind and into the heart. Moment to moment, everything, what, no matter what it is you're doing right now, you're in the now. In the moment to moment. And as you've relaxed your bodies and you've moved into the now and you've focused on your breathing to stay in the now, this breath that we have sustains these bodies. The bodies that we have sustain the kingdom of God within it. So that's why our breath is divine positive energy. And we take it along with the God force, our chi, our ki, our prana. We move it right up effortlessly through these energy vortexes. These are seven colored wheels of light. They each have a different flower, a geometrical shape in the center of the flower. These are the conduits and the connections and the energy centers of spirit, of the God, of the one, of pure consciousness. And they, they connect to the physical. We begin with the divine positive energy, our breath. We breath in. We take it through the red wheel of light to begin with the root chakra, the muladhara. This is career, money, mindset, sense of belonging. This root chakra represents our foundation and feeling of being in the now. It's at the base of the spine and the tailbone area. Emotional issues. Survival issues, such as financial Independence, money and food. Physical association, spine, rectum, legs, arms, circulatory system. Sacral chakra, the orange wheel of light. Vadisthana, sexuality and pleasure. It is our connection and ability to accept others in new experiences. Location, lower abdomen, about two inches below the navel and two inches in. Emotional issues, sense of abundance, well-being, pleasure, sexuality, physical association.
association, reproductive organs, kidneys, bowels, immune system. Then we move to the golden yellow wheel of light, the solar plexus chakra, the manapura, personal power and ability to channel. This is our ability to be confident and in the flow, in the now of our lives. Location is upper abdomen and the stomach area. Emotional issues, self-worth, self-confidence, self-esteem, physical association, central nervous system, pancreas, liver, digestive tract, and skin. Then we move to the emerald green wheel of light, the anahata, love, relationships, and self acceptance. It is our ability to love. In the event that you do not love yourself, how can you love anything else? Location is center of chest just above the heart. Emotional issues are love, joy, inner peace, physical association, heart, thymus, lower lungs, circulatory system, immune system. Then we move to the blue wheel of light, the throat chakra, the the shuddha. This is self-expression. It's our ability to communicate. It is in our throat. Emotional issues, communication, self-expression of feelings and the truth. Physical association, thyroid, respiratory system, teeth, vocal cords. Then we move to the third eye chakra, the ajna. Intuition, sense of purpose and direction in life. It is our ability to focus on and see the big picture. Location is forehead between the eyes, called the brow chakra. Emotional issues, intuition, imagination, wisdom, ability to think and make decisions, physical association, pituitary gland, eyes, sinuses. Then, the violet wheel of light, the sasra, this is our connection to the divine. It's the highest chakra, it represents our ability to be fully connected spiritually. It's at the very top of our heads. Emotional issues, inner and outer beauty, our connection to spirituality and pure bliss, the God, the pure consciousness, that which you are. Physical association, pineal gland, brain, nervous system, We bring this divine positive energy, our breath, along with our God force energy, our chi, all the way up to the top of our head. We hold it briefly. I am light. I am love. I am. And in that brief moment, we super condense and compress this energy into pure liquid energy. And we release it over the pineal gland. Pineal gland is very important to us while we're in these bodies. It is the gateway to all the particles of existence. It is the gateway to pure consciousness and beyond. Now in your heart, mind you, view it however you choose. I look at it as a rosebud, a green ball. And I, when I release this pure liquid energy over it, it immediately goes into full bloom, beautiful rose, wonderful fragrance, and multicolored petals. And it's a soft, vibrating frequency, yet omnipotently powerful. And I watch this in my heart, mind as all the gateways open effortlessly. Everything and everything, nothing and nothing, you are with all. You can be everywhere or nowhere at the same time. We are consciously aware that each and one, every one of us is of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. We're also aware that we are merged, that we are one. The body, the heart, mind, the mind, the soul, the higher self. The spirit. The God. The pure consciousness. All one. We. Are heaven 
Durbin, the Seraphim, and the Archetypes. The Ascended Masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Sananda, Jesus, El Moria, Abundantia, Pell Thought, many, many, many more. Both of them are consciously aware that they are of the highest and from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. Now, the archangels, cherubim, seraphim, archetypes, they're a civilization that vibrates at a different frequency than we do. We don't see them like we see each other, but they're there. And we meet with them all the time. Could be a stranger shows up to help you with something. Could be someone in just in conversation that pops up out of the clear blue. But you're definitely interacting with them on a daily basis. And remember, they are part of you. And you are part of them. 50, 60,000 can surround any one of us at any one time. Because of their vibrational frequency, they can house a large number in a small area. The ascended masters, they are those who have ascended, have mastered ascension out of body and hold pure God form, consciousness, pure consciousness. We have ascended into body to experience physical form, to create our experiences, to perfect our creation. Are they us and we them? Yes. So we're compelled in the liberation of this planet Earth, Gaia Aria, in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light, to reach out to all the different aspects of us, all the different facets of us. So we call out to all of the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, and this circle of light that we are forming. Now they come in the Googleplexes. One Googleplex fills this entire universe. They come in the trillions of Googleplexes from every direction, and they are with us now. We call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, agartha, beneath earth. All of these civilizations, only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, can be with us in this now, in this meditation, the forming of the circle of life. And they come in the billions, and they are with us now. We call upon all the off-worlders, all the galactics, all the celestials. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and of and from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, can be with us in this now, in this meditation, in the form of the circle of light. And they come in the billions. They have been assisting us in our evolution, in our ascension, in our enlightenment, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. We're really familiar with a handful of them, somewhat familiar. Over a thousand travel through the solar system every single day. The ones we are somewhat familiar with includes all the levels and species of the civilizations, the good, the not so good, and the bad. The Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the Zeta Reticuli, the Feline, the Gray, the Nord, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Avion, Many, many, many more. And in the billions, they are with us now. We call upon all of our loved ones, all those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime, and all lifetimes that we 
believe inhabit it. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deep as deep as deep as eternal love, and of and from the highest of deep as deep as deep as eternal gratitude, can be with us in this now, in this meditation, in the forming of this circle of light, which is the light that we all are. And they come in the billions and they are with us now. We call upon all the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms on and above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now, in this meditation, and the forming of this circle of light, all of us. Now we're only familiar with a fraction of them. And they come in the trillions shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations of which we most have not seen. The ones that we're somewhat familiar with, the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, and the minotaur. Many, many, many more. And they come in the trillions, and they are with us now. We're all together. Arm in arm, hand in hand, our gods are one. We're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness and kindness, generosity and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence and abundance we're all one and we're all God and we're all love and our God light energy is in all that there is ever has been, ever will be forever beyond and forever and it continues to expand and it continues to intensify we all form a massive circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now and this meditation. It is the pure consciousness deep with our center cores. It is the purest of the deepest and the highest eternal love. It is the peace that we all seek outside of ourselves. And all along, it is within. It is who we are. This light that we have formed, this circle, is so bright that it grays out the darkness of space. It is so brilliant that it would take over a thousand billion suns in this solar system to equal, even come close to its shine and brilliance. And it floods everything and everything, nothing and nothing, all life, the highest supreme value in the universes. All of our brothers and sisters, this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light, it is perpetual. It is unending. It is uninterrupted. And it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We begin to levitate up above this planet. As we do, we're met with a gossamer field. This field is massive. It is filled with trillions of countless little tiny mirrors reflecting all of us back and forth to and from each other. In trillions of a variety of colors. It is a sea, an ocean of glitter. It is deep, pure, eternal love. It is our core essence, pure consciousness, the God reflecting amongst us all. We are immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is the column that reminds each and every one of us that we are the power of healing. 
We are then met with the violet, blue, purple, trans flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column that reminds each and every one of us of our omnipotent power, our strength and resolve. Then we're met with the white fire. This is a column that reminds each and every one of us that we are imbued from head to toe, inside and out, with a perpetual armor, white fire armor, God light force armor, pure, deep, eternal love and gratitude armor. It is of the highest of the highest high frequency. It cannot be disturbed by any external power authority whatsoever. Nothing externally can interrupt it and destroy it. We are protected 24-7. But only you have the power. Only you. Only you. That if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, you will create a breach in your white fire armor. And in this breach shall enter all of the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, they will come flooding in. If you do decide to do this, whether consciously or unconsciously, you are met with the purple transmuting flame. This is the column that reminds each and every one of us that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all of the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. We are then met with the violet ray. This is a column that reminds each and every one of us that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. We can purify, cleanse the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing our breach, restoring our vibrational harmony, into the deepest, deepest, deepest of eternal love. We are then met with a golden white pink light. This is the column that reminds each and every one of us that we are the sunsets. We are the sunrises. We are the rain. We are the rainbows. We are the grasses. We are the forests. We are the trees that make up the forests. We are the waters, we're the sky, we're the clouds, we're the warmth of the sunshine, we're the sunshine. We are everything and everything and nothing and nothing, all at once. We continue to ascend above this planet in the circle of life. As we do so, some of us step outside of our physical bodies, float effortlessly above them. As we do this, we are met with a massive crystalline light tower. We created this crystalline light tower. It's larger than the solar system. We see in the center, there is an oblong sphere. And this oblong sphere holds within it in the center this golden white pulsating starburst light that is sending out waves of deep pure eternal love saturating all of us inside and out head to toe eternally it's a soft like a mist wave warming us through our heart minds then all of the colored lights around it the the, the bands of a multitude of different vibrant colored lights are sending the waves out, saturating and flooding all of us in gratitude, in gentleness, in kindness, in generosity, in humbleness, in bliss, in joy, in peace, in tranquility, in benevolence, in abundance, in prosperity, in wealth, in riches, continuously, ever flowing, saturating all of us. Now we look at the top, we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees, flooding and saturating all things, all life, the highest supreme value in the universe.
And this golden ocean, we are drops of it. We hold its essence. The ocean is the drops, and the drops are the ocean. We look a little bit over, we see our meditative sphere. This massive sphere is at center circle. We all created this sphere well over two years ago. It houses well over a thousand of our meditations in perpetual motion of the highest of the highest high vibrational frequencies of deep eternal love, gratitude, bliss, joy, peace, flooding, saturating, lifting the entire civilization on in above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now and this meditation, this circle of light. Full liberation, high density, high dimension. And every day, on world and off world, we all gather as parts of each other, as part of the one, source creator, to liberate this planet, Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now, and this meditation, and this circle of life, perpetually. And this is why this fear continues to expand and continues to intensify and it can be seen, heard, and felt and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Feel this in your heart, minds, in your motion picture. Understand this. Each of us are the perfect shining light which not only makes the existence of God's kingdom possible, but also allows it to be seen as some wonderful, magna, glorious, spectacular heaven. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close this out.
your heart minds in the motion picture, you see who you are. You are the perfect shining light, which not only makes the existence of God's kingdom possible, but also allows it to be seen as some wonderful, magnum, glorious heaven. Take this with you for the rest.